What's going on there folks? Good morning to everyone out there. It is uh, the Earth Master here on the live stream. Uh, it's April 21st, 2022, about 11.45 a.m. So still morning here on this Thursday. Uh, having a little issues here with the internet on the stream, so hopefully it will hold up. If not, uh, if the stream does go down, I will try to bring it up as quick as possible. Uh, but for an update, we're going to get that going right now, a 2.3 earthquake. In this area of the world, we had a pretty large earthquake overnight down here off the I believe, let me check here real quick, see if this was inland or off the coast. This came in pretty late last night into the area of the Nicaragua area. Let's go ahead and check out this region here. That, By the way, check that signature out. That is from that earthquake that struck last night. Okay. Uh, let's go over here to the USGS map and see what we got going on here. We have seen quite a bit of swarming in this area, uh, which, by the way, looks like it was off coast uh, by a little ways. Originally came in as a 6.9 downgrade to a 6.7 at 25.3 uh, kilometers into the uh, southern end of the Middle America Trench. It was felt broadly all over the place. Costa Rica, Nicaragua, uh, Honduras, San Salvador area. Uh, all reported filling this strong earthquake. Of course, it is in a highly uh, active zone when it comes to earthquakes. See that uh, all up and down that middle America trench. Some of those can get much bigger than a 6.7. So for now, I would call this just a moderate quake in terms of the potential that this thing can actually release here into the uh, middle America trench. I don't know if there was a tsunami statement issued on there or not. Uh, Looks like when this came in, 6.8 from the tsunami.gov website. I uh, don't believe there's anything that was listed. No tsunami threat. Of course, that was about midnight my time, so a good 11 hours or so ago when that came in. Uh, of course, I was sleeping around that time. Getting ready to do some uh, storm chasing today. Got uh, some pretty high cape values around the California area. Uh, with uh, dynamics for some possible strong storms out here in Northern California. So I'm getting ready uh, to do that here pretty soon. But wanted to get an update done uh, this afternoon or early early afternoon. Uh, some aftershock sequences here following that 6.7. A couple of low-grade 4s. A uh, little bit deeper though. A little bit further inland. Meaning a little bit deeper into the subduction zone. Uh, largest sequence so far, 4.5. Uh, but I'm sure there's a lot more going on than the fours that are showing up here on the map. Uh, just not showing it there on the uh, the USGS side. Southern California, what have we got going on? Still seeing some movement down the year around the Brawley seismic zone. Uh, earlier this morning, looks like a couple hours ago, we had that 1.7 and a 2.5. Uh, a couple quakes this morning, so I don't think the activity is done there yet. Um, all this activity just kind of points towards regional pressure as a whole, right? The North American plates, Pacific plate area, and adjacent plates, all kind of under the gun here for uh, pressure right now in the region. We haven't seen too much in terms of uh, further release over here along the Western Pacific. That 6.0 occurred late, uh, or actually yesterday sometime, late afternoon. Um, so still watching this area here, Eastern Pacific plate, and uh, one area that hasn't really seen too much movement is down here in the South America region. Uh, just one earthquake here in the Bolivia area, 221 kilometer deep, 4.4 into this major subduction zone here. Largest earthquake recorded down here in the Chile area uh, back in the early 60s. Let's go ahead and check out uh, further activity along the west coast where we're seeing, uh, like I mentioned, the Brawley seismic zone still remain active. Uh, Ridgecrest area has gone quiet. Normally we see this line of earthquake movement up here. Now we're just kind of centered down here in the southern segment of that uh, fracture zone from 2019. Uh, nothing really going on on the Garlock Fault Zone. Pretty quiet. A little activity here outside of the uh, Tehachapi area. Uh, well, to the southwest of Tehachapi. Looks like towards the, uh, the Grapevine area. Right there at the interjunction, interjunction of the... San Andreas Fault, the Garlock Fault, and uh, the Big, Fi Big Pine Fault. Kind of a little squeeze there in that region. Not a whole lot going on up here north, though, folks. Look at that uh, eastern part of Sierra Nevada. All pretty quiet up here through the northern part of the state as well. 
Looking into the Pacific Northwest, look at that, nothing. Hardly anything going on anywhere throughout the Pacific Northwest. Uh, looks like about the same with Yellowstone. Of course, we did see that uh, pretty large signature there from that 6.7 shaking things up. Kind of gives me a general idea of which seismograph stations are working pro appropriately out here, right? Kind of look at them all. Most of them are showing them. Look at some of these. Didn't even show a, a blip on the map here. Nothing. You can't tell me that 6.7 didn't send seismic waves uh, throughout the uh, region here. But it, this one does not want to pick it up whatsoever. I know there's different settings and adjustments for localized earthquake activity or deep earthquake activity. But still, when a large earthquake happens around the world, it should be picked up on all the stations here. And a couple of these are not looking like they're properly tuned, at least uh, from what I can see. All right, let's see here. So nothing showing up really, even locally on the seismograph stations there at Yellowstone. A little bit of spotty activity throughout the Southern Plains, Oklahoma, parts of Western Texas as well. Uh, one more earthquake over here in the New Madrid zone with a 2.3 near uh, Dyersburg, Tennessee. 4.3 kilometers there just out, actually within the New Madrid zone. Puerto Rico, look at this area around Puerto Rico now starting to light up a little bit. Uh, following that activity there off the coast of the uh, Middle America Trench. Looks like a couple threes and some twos kicking up here uh, throughout the course of the morning. Hawaii getting in on uh, some activity it looks like. Uh, southeastern portion. One at least within the last hour. 2.2 uh, to, uh, at 2 kilometers. Pretty shallow movement here. Most of this activity pretty deep around 30 to 34 kilometers. Which has been ongoing since about the 60s. Uh, let's see what else we got. I uh, did have some movement over here in our quiet zone, in our watch area, near the Kuril Islands of 5.0, 16.8 kilometers. I know we had some uh, uh, volcanic activity here around the Kuril Kamchaka Trench area. We'll cover that a little bit more uh, in detail tonight. I uh, just want to do a quick update here before we head out and uh, set up for today's um, storm chasing event. Solar weather activity remains elevated here, folks. Look at this. Following the X flare, um, almost X flare last night, right? It was a uh, um, M 9.6, pretty uh, powerful solar flare. It looks like it did produce a CME, but it did, I don't think it's going to hit us directly. It's going to probably skim us to the north. Uh, so since then, we've seen uh, continuous C-grade activity, C-flare activity, and um, no M-flare yet, but uh, you know, it, it's still there. The possibility is still there for uh, more M-flares and X-flares as this thing rotates further into view of our region. Pretty dynamic looking sunspots, pretty large ones at that, and um, got some more trailing behind it. There's some new development. So this thing's pretty massive, folks. It looks pretty cool. And I'm sure anyone that's got a solar telescope or solar lens is probably getting some awesome shots of this uh, activity right now. So for now, it looks like 99% chance C-flare, M-flare stance remains at 75% chance X-flare, 25% uh, chance. Right now, things just kind of uh, active. You can see it kind of elevated here, staying st pretty steady, a little decline. Gradual decline there from last night's M flare, but uh, uh, like I said, don't let that fool you one bit. Uh, geomagnetic forecast over the next couple days looks pretty minimal, folks. Right now, KP index there stands around a two, it looks like, and uh, just see how this thing plays out. So I'm gonna watch the, uh, be watching the internet, seeing if, uh, seeing if this thing is gonna hold up. I know, uh, it, I don't think it's YouTube. Kind of looks like it's on my side. Uh, I do run it. I uh, run the uh, ISP here. Uh, I've had them for a couple years, and they're pretty strong. They remain uh, one of my top choices here in Northern California for speed and durability. But today, something's going on. I don't know what it is. It is affecting my bit rate in the uh, in the stream. So not running e even anywhere near. I should. Be. Whoa, look at that. Hold on a second here. We got a little earthquake coming into the uh, Solomon Islands. And also, it looks like Yellowstone showing a little bit of movement here. Doesn't look anything uh, too big there at Solomon Islands. Just a little activity kicking up here on the uh, seismograph chart. Not showing up yet on the globe. 
but uh, definitely showing up on the live seismos here following the Barrett station that's going to be this one this little peak right here looks pretty localized very well defined earthquake flat lined the region probably no bigger than a four or a five in that area and a little bit of activity it looks like around the Yellowstone kicking up here uh, just with, within the past few minutes Dinsmere, Dinsmore showing some activity see these little spikes there's some earthquakes there along the northern California coastline very small ones but they're definitely showing up all right guys uh, I'm gonna jump off here have a great day and like I said if the stream does go down for some oddball reason it looks like it might unfortunately with the way the uh, bit rates going uh, I will attempt to get it back up as soon as I can of course you guys all know that because We've had some issues in the past, and I, I definitely try to get them up as soon as I can. Have a good day, folks. Enjoy your Thursday. We will chat you guys a little bit later on. Make sure you subscribe because we are going to be out storm chasing. Uh, so if you uh, enjoy some um, stormy skies and some hail and lightning, hopefully we'll get a tornado today. You never know. It stays like today where we see the tornado potential ramp up here in Northern California. So everything's just kind of set up nicely uh, with the daytime heating and a massive uh, amount of cold air going to be pulling over the region here later this afternoon. So, all right, we'll catch you a little bit later. Stay safe.